as we age, as I'm aging, right. I always have something that's off. Right. I just do. I'm a former dancer, so I put my body through a lot. I've broken left foot twice, right foot once, had surgery on my right foot, been on crutches. I mean, I'm just grateful every day I'm not on crutches, to be honest. Right. But I also want to um, be moving my body and be healthy for as long as I possibly can. <music> So when somebody comes to you, like me, mm -hmm. what do you do? Well, the first thing is the evaluation process. We take all of that history and realize that that history has made you where you're at today. Mm -hmm. And so what can we do little baby steps every single day to make those chronic injuries not become acute manifestations of this chronic condition. Mm -hmm. And so we look at the biomechanics of how someone moves and then take that into consideration for what they're wanting to do. Like I have a lot of people who in January want to start CrossFit or right. a workout like right. that. <laughs> oh, those New Year's resolutions. Right. And so yes. let's look at your history. Let's look at your structure. Let's take some x-rays of your spine. Let's take some x-rays of other joints that we're concerned about and let's see what that looks like so we're more proactive about stopping an injury than having to fix an injury once it gets there. Well, do you also have to perhaps change the activities you're doing? For the, uh, yes and no. I mean, sometimes we have to sort of just alter what we're doing. Like for, with me, most people say to me, I wanna start doing yoga, which is great. Yoga is a great thing to do, but there's certain types of spines that maybe certain positions during yoga are not the best position to be in for that particular person. Now, globally, in painting with a broad brush, yoga is great, but certain spines are certain certain little tweaks that we can make during the class that would put you at a less chance of having an injury. Well, you know, actually it's interesting because yoga is something I've been doing for over 30 years. Right. And there are some amazing yoga teachers out there. Mm -hmm. And there are some that are like created into like an exercise program. And I can't tell you how often I've seen people in class doing things that I know their body shouldn't be doing. Sure. And so I think that, um, knowing your body is the most important part. Most definitely. My, my sort of exercise cocktail, mm -hmm. as it were, is yoga, bar classes, and walking. Okay. Recently taken up kayaking, which I'm super excited about. Okay. But my kayak has pedals and paddles, and I'm having a hard time finding just kind of with my lower back and hip where the pedals feel comfortable. What should we be, all, all of us doing just for general maintenance. Yeah, so whatever activity you're doing, the pre and post activity is the most important. So we've got to do something to get our body ready for this activity. Huge cup of coffee. <laughs> whatever the case may okay. be. Okay. So warming up, getting your body ready for that activity. So mm -hmm. getting blood flow to that area, getting that whatever you're going to do ready for the taxing you're about to do to your body. So then you go do your activity. And then as soon as you're done, the post exercise um, stuff that you do is most important. So because, what is that? Because most yeah. posts for me is running home, take a quick Getting shower to work or to right. table with kids. So like, I, there's not the post is I finished. I'm so thankful I didn't go to Dunkin' Donuts. Instead, I pulled into Pure Bar. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, and that's and, and that's where we get into trouble because we just taken something from our body, but we never want to give back to it right away. So we've taken from it by doing this exercise. So icing down afterwards is huge, especially for you with your neck and your lower back, because those are your weak spots. Right. I'm not saying you have to jump into an ice bath, right. but at some point in time, we need to put some ice on the neck, ice on the lower back. Let's start the healing and recovery process from what we just did, the, again, to try to prevent an injury. When people come to see you or somebody else, so I guess what I want to help, I really mm -hmm. want to help people find what's right for them and to prevent injury. That is my point of this conversation. And I've been doing chiropractic since I was in my early 20s. I'm a big believer in it. I mean, I know people, sometimes people are scared. So kind right. of, let's address that. Like, yeah. what would you say? Because I, I'm such a believer in it. Sure. So I, I address it a couple of different ways. For the people who are a numbers person, mm -hmm. you know, we look at malpractice insurance as relative risk, just like with car insurance. People have a rate based upon their relative risk of getting in an accident. Yeah. Malpractice has the same thing. Yeah. So your general practitioner pays some amount, your surgeon pays some amount. My malpractice insurance is less than $100 a month. 
Okay, so so yeah. relatively speaking, my guess is it's more dangerous for me to get in the car with you than for me to adjust your yeah. spine. So I want to talk about kind of preventative care here. Sure. So we, I just, we just had a group of my girlfriends here, mm -hmm. and I would say the age range was. 45 to 55, okay. five of us, everybody. I had a double surgery on my wrist and my hand. I have old neck issues. I twisted my knee. I hurt my back a few times. Pretty significant case of tennis elbow. Badly. Everybody has something going on with their body. Sure. And you know, and for me, a big fear is I wanna be active for my whole life. And yeah. I, I mean, I'm sitting here right now, my hips feeling a little out. I always have something sort of out. I think I wasn't put together right. right. You know, I'm like a Gumby doll, so. Yeah, Gumby doll. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly, it was like, they didn't tighten the parts. Right. So, um, but everybody had something going on, a, a, you know, a back thing, a, a knee thing. So kind of in general, and I know it is very, very case specific, right. but in general, what would you tell people for kind of just like, you know, preventative care and sort of maintenance as we get older. Sure, so there's three different sort of prongs to that question. So to take care of a joint, no matter if it's your spine or your knee, you have to have joint mobility, joint flexibility, and joint strength. So if you don't have those three components, if you're mobile, which you're hypermobile, mm -hmm. but you don't have strength around it, you're still gonna have some dysfunction in that joint why you feel like your hip is always out. And so having all three of those components makes a joint healthy. So finding that where you're at on that uh, paradigm, as far as those three components sort of dictate how you're gonna be able to fix the problem, but not only that, but to allow that joint to age appropriately. Right, and hopefully people are, you know, I'm very much, sorry, I'm like now my hip hurts and I can't, I gotta, I'm not comfortable, oh my God. Oh, this is what's happening now. Okay, literally all of a sudden everything started to hurt and falling apart. So, um, so uh, you know, hopefully people are coming too before there's a real problem. I mean, this is one thing that I'm trying to really talk about in yeah. everything, whether it's financial, whether it is physical, whether it is mental, is steps we can do now to help for the future. Right. That, and that's what I'm trying to promote that idea because so often, we all wait till there's a problem before we go deal right. with it. Yeah, so being proactive is much better than being reactive. I, mean, there, I have a thing in my office that says the best medicine is to teach someone not to need it. And so if we can prevent something and we can find it before we actually have an issue, we'll be so far ahead of the game. And so right now I think we have, we've sort of mixed up two words in our language. The, the two words that we sort of use as synonyms, but they're not, is normal and common. And so, like with your neck, they will say that this is common to have, or normal to have this degeneration in your neck. I would say that it's common because we do computer stuff all day, right. we look at cell phones, but it's not a normal aging process. And what I would tell you why I'd say that is because you have joints above it and below it that are completely healthy. Mm -hmm. And all of those joints are born on the same day. So physiology and pathology, physiology going wrong is pathology. And so the pathology that we see in your neck is biomechanics that have been flawed. And someone will look at that and say it's normal because you're whatever age. Mm -hmm. But it's common, but it's not normal. Right. And so we've sort of been brainwashed with these changing of the words, just like if you look at your health insurance, they'll tell you that you have wellness coverage. Well, what is that wellness coverage? That wellness coverage is getting your mammogram or getting, if you're a male, prostate exam or blood work. And none of that is wellness. But they call it wellness care. That's really early detection. There's nothing wellness about getting a mammogram. Well, actually, this is something I really want to point out is everybody go get your insurance card out, call the number and ask what's covered. I think so much of kind of more Eastern medicine, mm -hmm. whether it's chiropractic, acupuncture, even massage, yeah. often people don't go because they're like, I can't afford that. Right. You'd be surprised what's on your insurance. So I really want everybody to call their insurance right now and find out what's covered because you're gonna be surprised more is covered than you think. I just keep hearing time, time, time again when it comes to aches and pains is inflammation in mm -hmm. our body. Um, and how do you address inflammation? What do you tell people? Because that's, I know the cause of so much disease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so inflammation is sort of a case-by-case -case basis. And so if you've done your physical for the year, 
Two of the tests that are on there are inflammation markers. People don't realize that. The ESR and C-reactive protein mm -hmm. are two inflammation markers that in a general blood screen they're gonna look for to just see how your body's doing with inflammation. But we can have a lot of inflammation and those tests still come back fine. So it's one of the, again, one of those things that you can't just go, oh, my test is fine, I'm fine. Right. And so, you know, one of the big things with inflammation is our diet. Our standard American diet is pro, inflammatory, right. pro, you know, all this box stuff, non, yeah. you know, Dairy, created stuff, cheese. right. Yeah. And so if we continue to go down that pathway, we're going to stay inflamed no matter what we do exercise wise because of what we're taking in. And so that's why the, you know, five, six years ago, the big rage was fish oils trying to counteract that inflama inflammation in the diet instead of going, because the American sort of way of thinking is, let me take a pill because I don't want to change what I'm doing. Right, and that is a very huge problem. Right. There, there is no pill for that. If you just say that for pretty much everything, there is no pill for that. It's such a big thing, and I know, and you know, and I know, I gotta to talk, I gotta talk to my friends here for a second. It really is what you do most of the time, not all of the time, but it is what you put in your body, how you treat your body. And I know it's hard to hear because we want a pill for that, but there's no pill for that. Okay. So what, what is on an anti-inflammatory diet? What are some things you should be eating or should not be eating? Sure. So the, the general, to make it easy, if it comes out of a box, it's inflammatory. So anything that has been packaged or in a box is going to be inf inflammation driven very, very strongly. So anything like that's got to come out. Okay. Then we look at anything that's white. So our potatoes, our starches, those are the big things that most people have in their diet that are inflammatory. And those are the, the big ones. I feel like if we could take that out, take the box stuff out, and then the third one is our grains. If we could take those three out. Wait, grains? What do you mean? Like, not like quinoa and farro and things like that. No, but oh. like our processed grains. Oh, okay, okay, I'm yeah, going like, to your Lord. okay. Like white bread. Right, oh yeah, yeah, like okay. That. And sugar? Yes, yeah, and sugars. And dairy? Yeah. Dairy, sugar, gluten. But I, I think if we could take out those three, the yeah. first three that we talked about, I think people would see a dramatic change in how they feel. Mm -hmm.